think your dandruff is just dry skin? It might be something much more serious. Scalp psoriasis affects millions, yet it's totally misunderstood, underdiagnosed, and often mistreated. This video is gonna walk you through exactly what it is, how to spot it, and what actually works to treat it. Hi, I'm Dr. Mamina, a triple board certified dermatologist, internist, and dermatopathologist. I've been treating patients for over 16 years and scalp psoriasis is something I see often. It's frustrating, stubborn, and deeply personal for many patients. But with the right knowledge and approach, there's hope. In this video, we will break down the science of scalp psoriasis, the symptoms you shouldn't ignore, what treatments are proven to work, including topicals and biologics, and how diet, lifestyle, and stress impact your flare-ups. You know me, I love taking a holistic approach with all things skin, so you're definitely gonna hear about the non-pharmaceutical like pharmaceutical ways to approach your skin health. All right, so what is scalp psoriasis? Scalp psoriasis is more than just a dry, flaky scalp. It's a chronic autoimmune condition where your immune system speeds up the life cycle of skin cells, causing red raised plaques and silvery scales on your scalp. Essentially, that's how psoriasis works anywhere on your body, but it can be especially annoying on the scalp, I would say. It often itches, burns, and in severe cases can even lead to temporary hair shedding or hair loss. It's triggered by your immune system's overreaction. We're gonna get a little nerdy here, specifically the Th17 and IL-23 pathways, which drive inflammation and keratinocyte overgrowth. And this isn't rare. Half the people with psoriasis will experience scalp involvement at some point. All right, so how does scalp psoriasis present itself? So often you'll get like thick, red, silvery scaly plaques at the hairline, like in the front, at the crown of the head, and often I like to see it at the back of the head. It can feel tight, itchy, painful, and emotionally exhausting. Unlike dandruff, psoriasis plaques are more well-defined and can bleed if scratched. Diagnosis is usually clinical, and I do have to say there is a lot of overlap with psoriasis and seborrheic dermatitis, which is another scalp condition that we see probably most often. And I feel like it can sort of fall on a spectrum. Like there's a condition in between psoriasis and, and seborrheic dermatitis called SIBO psoriasis. So it can fall like on a spectrum and sometimes it could be tricky to diagnose. Typically with seborrheic dermatitis, you're just dealing with a lot of dandruff. Sometimes there is some itching. Sometimes there is some like pink inflammation on the scalp. But when you're starting to see like full on rash on the scalp with potentially a lot of itching, with a lot of flaking, with like thick buildup of scale, then we're talking more psoriasis. If it's difficult to make a diagnosis clinically, sometimes we might do a biopsy, that's rare. Or sometimes we have to use dermoscopy to differentiate from other scalp conditions. There's other things that can affect the scalp as well. So I had a patient who thought she just had stubborn dandruff for years. Turns out when I examined her scalp, it was full on scalp psoriasis that needed a whole different approach entirely. All right, so let's talk about first line treatments for psoriasis. Topical steroids are still the gold standard for mild to moderate scalp psoriasis. We use like vehicles like foams, solution sprays, shampoos with like clebetazole, betamethasone. These can help calm the inflammation fast. We try to use vehicles like foams and sprays and shampoos because the scalp, obviously, we don't want it to get greasy. We don't want it to get messy. Every, it, it, inevitably, everything is messy, okay? That's why scalp psoriasis is so annoying to treat. But there are formulations that are more scalp friendly. All right, there's also vitamin D analogs like calcitriene. These are great for maintenance and combo use with steroids. In fact, steroid and vitamin D combos often outperform either alone. And in the last few years, we have two other non-steroidal topical anti-inflammatory options. One is Tepinarov or Vitama. The other one's Roflubilast or Zori. So treatment is becoming more promising, at least for topical treatments. And like I said, we will start with topicals from mild to moderate psoriasis. Oh, and one thing most people don't realize is that yeast plays a major role in scalp psoriasis. We have a ton of Malassezia yeast that live on our scalp. They love feeding on our scalp oils and <laughs> people with psoriasis, this can trigger inflammation and flares. So that's why anti-yeast shampoos like ketoconazole shampoo, ciclopyrox shampoo, we commonly prescribe those two. They reduce the yeast load and calm the scalp. For thicker plaques, we sometimes use keratolytic agents like salicylic acid, you know, in a shampoo form. These can help break down that thick scale. Obviously, dealing with the scalp, medicating the scalp is obnoxious. So like I said earlier, look for things that are non-greasy like foams, solutions, and then use shampoos that are medicated. 
All right, so if your scalp psoriasis is moderate to severe, or if you're just not responding to topicals, then we may move on to more systemic treatments. So we have biologics that target different cytokines like IL-17 or IL-23. IL-17 examples are secukinumab, like Cosentix, Isikinumab, like TALTS. There's also the anti-IL-23 examples are Rizinkinumab or Skyrizi um, or Gusethumab, Guseth, I can never pronounce it Gusethumab. I just, it's Trimphia. Like I said, it's just a whole nother language. We just go by the brand names for a lot of these, but I feel like for, for like YouTube and stuff and videos, I, I need to say like the formal generic name for educational purposes. <laughs> Anyways, I am obsessed with these biologics. They have shown amazing results in clearing scalp psoriasis. For example, studies show up to 80% scalp clearance with IL-17 inhibitors. I've had patients who've struggled for years and then saw their scalp clear completely within a few months of starting a biologic. For those who aren't candidates for biologics, there are some oral immunomodulatory options like a Premolast, aka Otesla. And like, I know some people are needle averse, so Tesla's an oral medicine. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I see more side effects with Tesla than I would with um, an IL-17 or IL-23. And I think they're also coming out with an oral IL-23 inhibitor, so stay tuned for that, for those who are like needle averse. Now let's talk about what you can do outside the pharmacy because managing scalp psoriasis honestly requires a whole body approach. Y'all know this. Let's start with stress, which is one of the most common and underappreciated triggers for flares. When your body is under chronic stress, your immune system becomes dysregulated and then that can directly worsen inflammation in your skin. I have done a whole video on stress and skin and you can check it out right here. Even small daily practices like meditation, journaling, breath work, therapy, these can all lower cortisol levels and help your nervous system regulate. It's honestly not like woo woo, it's physiology. Something else interesting that I've noticed too in my patients with psoriasis are like people who work night shifts. There is a study, I think there's more than one study, but I've, saw, I've seen one study that showed how working night shift in women increases their risk for psoriasis or can trigger more psoriasis. And you know, when you are altering your circadian rhythm and you're not following like the natural biological rhythm, um, that is a stressor on your body too. So it's another thing to think about. Okay, so now let's get into diet. While there's no single psoriasis diet, many people do see an improvement with an anti-inflammatory approach. I think most of the evidence is with a Mediterranean-based diet. So you wanna prioritize things like omega-3 fatty acids from sources like salmon, sardines, flax seeds, walnuts. They can help regulate immune activity. They're anti-inflammatory. Load up on antioxidant-rich fruits and veggies, especially leafy greens, berries, cruciferous vegetables, like, duh. Cut back on refined sugar, processed foods, foods high in saturated fats, they all tend to fuel inflammation and oxidative stress. Hopefully, hopefully you all know this. It's tough because these types of foods, these processed foods are so prevalent in our society. So I just feel like it's such an uphill battle. Like as doctors, we're just like, and people know, people know they shouldn't be eating this too. Like I think so many people are aware but things aren't being changed systemically to minimize that kind of availability of food in our lives. Anyways, that's a whole nother soapbox. An area that I'm super interested in, there's a growing body of evidence connecting gut health to psoriasis. A balanced microbiome can regulate our immune system. So adding things that feed our microbiome, fermented foods, kimchi, kefir, kefir, miso, sauerkraut, and then fiber rich prebiotics like garlic, oats, bananas, Jerusalem artichoke. These can all help support your gut skin axis. A high quality probiotic may also be beneficial, especially for those with a history of antibiotic use or GI issues. We also have to talk about alcohol and smoking. Okay, alcohol, especially in excess, is a well-established psoriasis trigger. It increases gut permeability, it fuels inflammation, and it may reduce treatment response. It also like affects the way your body absorbs nutrients. Um, and then it affects your liver. Fatty liver has been associated with psoriasis. So alcohol is just no bueno with psoriasis, okay? Sorry to say. And then no big surprise, smoking is another major trigger. Not only does it increase your risk of developing psoriasis, it can make existing disease harder to treat. If you're dealing with chronic flares and you smoke, quitting can honestly make a huge difference. I know easier said than done, but just have to say it. Smoking just does so much badness for so many different health conditions. So I think most people who smoke realize that it's bad for them, but yeah, 
it's one of those things where it's like, what do you want? What's more important to you, you know? And it's tough for some people. And then on the flip side, exercise can be a game changer. Regular movement can lower systemic inflammation, it improves insulin sensitivity, and it reduces stress and can help regulate immune function. Like exercise is one of those super underrated things. Like we all know exercise is really important for you, but if people actually exercise, it can heal so many different ailments. It's amazing. And it doesn't even have to be intense, like even walking, gentle yoga, dancing, that all counts. And then bonus points if you're also supporting your mental health, which is tightly linked to flare frequency. Finally, you know, scalp care is also really important. You wanna avoid shampoos with like harsh formulations, fragrances, um, harsher levels of sulfates, because these can strip your skin and affect your skin barrier, essentially. You wanna use like fragrance-free formulas, and then when drying your scalp, gently pat your scalp instead of rubbing because trauma, scratching, like rough brushing, these can all trigger psoriasis through this phenomenon called Kebner phenomenon, where actual physical trauma to the skin can set off psoriasis. Bottom line, managing scalp psoriasis isn't just about what you put on your skin, it's about how you care for your entire body. All right, so let's talk about natural and integrative therapies for psoriasis because while they aren't a replacement for prescription treatments, some of them can play a really meaningful and supportive role. So first up, let's talk about supplements with the most science behind them. Omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil or algae oil are probably the most well-studied. They can reduce systemic inflammation, support your skin barrier, and may even help improve response to your biologic treatments. Studies also suggest that higher doses, like often in a range of two to four grams per day, can be helpful for people with psoriasis, but obviously always check with your doctor on the dosing and before even starting a supplement. And then probiotics may help by improving gut health and modulating your immune responses, especially if you've had a history of antibiotic use or GI issues, like I mentioned earlier. And there's increasing evidence connecting the gut microbiome to chronic inflammatory conditions, including psoriasis. So. Like I said, supporting your gut flora could indirectly benefit your skin. Vitamin D is another big one. So many people with psoriasis have suboptimal levels of vitamin D, which plays a role in regulating immune function and keratinocyte turnover. So supplementing to bring your levels into an optimal range, not just the bare minimum, may help improve skin symptoms. And then speaking of vitamin D, we have to talk about light, sunlight. And I forgot to mention another treatment. We don't use this as much for scalp psoriasis, but there's light therapy where there's a specific wavelength of UVB light. It's narrow band UVB, it's 320 nanometers in wavelength. And that penetrates to the level of your skin where there are certain inflammatory markers and can modulate those inflammatory markers and de decrease inflammation. So that's why when people with psoriasis go outside, they can notice improvement. I think not only from the, U, the specific wavelength of UVB, the narrowband UVB, but also like the vitamin D from outside. Now, this is like sort of a tricky line with dermatologists because we don't tell people to just bake out in the sun because of the increased risk for skin cancer. There is a way to do it safely. You know, you wanna minimize your time outside. You definitely don't wanna burn, but light, whether it's sunlight or light therapy, is another form of therapy essentially for psoriasis. And this is not me giving you like a hall pass to go bake out in the sun, like I said, okay? You have to still sun responsibly. All right, another supplement, curcumin. This is the active compound found in turmeric and this has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. When you take it orally in supplement form, ideally with black pepper extract or in liposomal form, um, this is helpful for better absorption. It has been shown to be, have promising results in clinical studies for reducing you know, psoriasis severity scores. So now let's talk about herbal ingredients that are still emerging, but look promising. There's something called indigo naturalis, which is a traditional Chinese herb that's been studied in topical ointments for plaque psoriasis, and it's shown significant improvement even in some trials. It's even being formulated into some prescription level treatments in Asia. Berberine, which is found in herbs like golden seal and berberi, has antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory effects. Some early studies suggest it may help modulate immune responses in psoriasis, but of course we need more human trials for this. And then there's this herb, I, know, I don't ever know if I pronounce it correctly, but it's Scutellaria bal bicalensis or Chinese skullcap. This contains flavonoids that have also been shown to reduce inflammation and 
the proliferation of skin cells in vitro and in animal models. It's another herb with growing interest in integrative dermatology. Obviously, we still need more studies. So in summary, with the things that I just mentioned, I think the things that we have the most evidence for with supplements are um, omega-3s, vitamin D, and curcumin. And then as for other complementary therapies, while the research is still early or limited, many people report benefits from things like acupuncture, which may help with stress reduction and overall immune balance. Then there's also Ayurveda, which is a holistic system of medicine that often includes dietary adjustments. There's also some herbal remedies and lifestyle changes tailored to your dosha. And then there's something called balneotherapy and climatotherapy, which involves bathing in mineral-rich waters like the Dead Sea or spending time in specific climates to reduce flare frequency. I actually had the privilege to visit um, La Roche-Posay, France, because they do offer balneotherapy at their like um, scent, at their like thermal spring water center there. It's amazing. People with eczema and psoriasis can bathe in these mineral rich waters, super healing. And I love that it's just another like non-pharmacological, like minimal to no side effect option for patients. There's another medicine I wanna talk about. It's not commonly prescribed at all. Only some doctors will prescribe this. It's called low-dose naltrexone or LDN. This is an off-label prescription medication that's gaining popularity in autoimmune and inflammatory conditions because it has the ability to like modulate your immune response and reduce systemic inflammation. I do prescribe low-dose naltrexone. Like I said, I don't, I mean, I only know like a handful of derms out of the thousands of derms I know that prescribe this. It's not a common thing. I think that there are more rheumatologists that will prescribe this, but it's something to look into if, if you're not a candidate for biologics or other treatments. And I always have to like put this disclaimer in. I just want people to remember, natural doesn't always mean safe or right for everyone. Please talk to your doctor or dermatologist before starting any new supplement or treatment, especially if you're pregnant, nursing, and taking other medications. So scalp psoriasis can feel overwhelming, but there are science-backed options that work, okay? If you want to learn more, I'm a co-author for the book, The Holistic Psoriasis Management and Nutrition Guide. It has everything I talked about in this video, as well as more alternative options and a nutrition plan. And I'll provide the Amazon link in the show notes. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what's been your biggest challenge with scalp psoriasis. I'd love to help you navigate it. You want to learn more about treating inflammation from the inside out? Check out my video on skin and diet linked right here. I'll see you there.